Tokyo really is a beautiful city. It sprawls out for miles in every direction and is absolutely stuffed to the brim with endless photo opportunities. Whether you're looking for architecture, people, nature, culture or food, whatever your preference, you'll be guaranteed to find something interesting to shoot. Perhaps you're more of a casual photographer and your holy grail is the ultimate vacation selfie. I mean, who's to say that you really even went on vacation at all if there are no selfies to prove it? Whatever your situation, knowing where to begin can be a little overwhelming. So let me ease your burdens and I'll show you around some of my favorite photography spots in Tokyo. First on the list is probably one of the most renowned locations in Tokyo, if not the whole of Japan. I'm of course talking about Shibuya Scramble Crossing. I'm sure before you even stumbled across this video, you'd at least heard rumors of Shibuya Crossing. It's the busiest intersection in the world and is used by upwards of 300,000 people every single day. But even with its hyper popularity, there's always new ways to take photos of the madness. Ideally, you want to get up high. So let me show you some of the best vantage points. The most obvious place to start would be the front row view from Starbucks directly on the crossing. This is a great spot, but almost impossible to get a clear shot unless you're willing to wait an awfully long time for a seat to free up. And even then, you might have to start throwing some elbows to make sure one of the other 20 people waiting doesn't take it first. Also, the angle from here is a little flat, so we'd be better off going up a little bit higher. Next up is Mark City Walkway. This is an indoor bridge that connects the Mark City Mall to Shibuya train station and passes over the main road. This gives you a clear line of sight of the crossing, and the window is bigger and often less crowded than the one found in Starbucks. The only downside, the glass is shatterproof, which means it has steel wire running through it. You can kind of work around this if your camera has a shallow enough depth of field, but on a smartphone, it might be a bit more challenging. Although saying that, the benefit to a tiny camera is that you can shoot between the wires if need be. Going up higher still, you have two more great options. The first is the Sky Lobby on the 11th floor of the Hikarie Mall. Like the previously mentioned locations, entry is free, but you might want to pack a zoom lens when shooting from here as it's a little further away from the crossing itself. For a similar view that is a little bit closer, the best place to try would be the viewing platform on the roof of Shibuya Magnet, another mall that is located on the corner of the crossing. Again, it's a well-known and popular spot, but usually not so crowded and allows you to get some seriously steep angles. Entry to the platform is 300 yen, which might seem, no pun intended, a little bit steep, but it's worth it for the best view. You can also pay a little extra and have a photo taken from above the platform by these permanent cameras as an interesting holiday souvenir. As someone who really enjoys their peace and quiet, I can only spend so much time in Shibuya before I'm pushed to the edge of a murderous rampage. To calm myself down, one of my go-to places for instant tranquility is Go Tokuji Temple in Setagaya. Japan's insane abundance of temples, you're probably thinking that this one must be pretty special for me to have put it on my list. Well, that is certainly true and it has one key trait that sets it apart from all the rest. Thousands of bloody cats. Not actual cats, mind you, but rather maneki nekos. The charming little, well, uh, charms that have become famous the world over. Hang around there long enough and you might even get talking to one of the locals and end up spending the rest of your day getting drunk with a retiree's walking club. Although I can't guarantee it.
Another favourite of mine is Hiei Shrine in the Chioda district. Perhaps a little bit more busy than Gotokuji, this small shrine gives all the traditional Kyoto vibes without any of the travelling. It also features a stairway encased in bright red tori gates, which is very reminiscent of Kyoto's most famous shrine, Fushimi Inari. In keeping with the peaceful theme of temples and shrines, next on my list is one of my absolute favourite places in Tokyo, the Meguro Institute of Science and Nature Study. If you've been watching this channel for a while, then you might think that this place looks a tad familiar. That's probably because it featured in its very own video, which you can watch by clicking the card on the screen right now. But wait, wait, you know, don't, not now, do it after, because you should watch this video and then, then come back and click the card. That's, this is a mess. This place is the closest thing you'll get to being in the countryside without ever having left the city. Depending on the season, the scenery is always different and the area is home to a whole host of birds, animals and insects. The trees are thick and do an absolutely outstanding job of blocking the noise from the surrounding streets, leaving you to shoot in complete solitude. Also worth noting is that admission is limited to only 300 people at any one time, so you'll rarely, if ever, find yourself battling with the crowds to get that perfect shot. Tokyo is one of the largest cities in the world, so it goes without saying that if you can get up high enough, then the views are pretty incredible. Most people might flock to places like Tokyo Tower or the Sky Tree for the ultimate cityscape panorama, but I'll do you one better. Yabisu Garden Place Tower Sky Lounge. Christ, that was a lot of words. From the ground you'll be treated to some pretty nice architectural views, but for the real money shot, you're going to need to find the elevator around the back of the building. This will take you on an express trip directly to the 38th or 39th floor. Both these floors feature a nice selection of high-end restaurants and bars with seats in the window. If you're not that peckish though, or just don't fancy paying for the view, then you can check out the Sky Lounge for free. Visiting in the middle of a normal weekday, the place is almost deserted. The first time I visited, I was pretty surprised to see how empty it was, with my first 10 minute shooting from the window being completely uninterrupted by one member of staff walking past to grab a broom from the supply room. Now I'm not sure how long this is going to last, but I'll be sure to make the most of it while I can. No trip to Japan would be complete without a few bizarre photos to leave your friends back home completely and utterly bemused. For your best chances of taking such photos, one place stands above all others for its weirdness per square meter ratio, Akihabara. Akihabara, also known as Electric Town, is home to the world's biggest congregation of anime, gaming and electronic stores. 
Literally any piece of old retro tap that you could possibly dream of can be found somewhere in this neon utopia. Speaking of neon, visiting at night will give you a completely different view of the entire area. Hundreds of bright signs light the streets and can give you some really cool backdrops to what might normally be a fairly average photo. If you're not about the nerd life, then there's also a couple of interesting viewpoints like Izumi Bridge, or this small cluster of shrines that sits right next to the river with a train line passing overhead, giving you a great blend of traditional culture and modern technology. Obviously, this isn't all there is to see in Tokyo, as there are far more photo-worthy locations in the city than I could ever possibly fit into a single video. If you have any personal favourites that didn't make the cut this time, then be sure to let me know down in the comments. As always, I'll leave map directions to all the locations down in the video description. If you found this video to be helpful, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Kantan Japan for future content, and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.